So our job is to identify here if we can get this down to exactly one number for the exact percentage increase in the population of City K between 1980 and 1990. Statement one is just garbage. Like if you look at it, it's clearly not enough information. It doesn't involve 1980 or 1990. But it needs to make us a little bit nervous because why is it here? Is it here because it adds value to statement two? Is it here because it's distracting us from statement two being correct on its own? Or is it something that looks like it fixes a hole in statement two, but it actually still leaves that hole open? Now think about it from the test maker's perspective. They're priming you by making this statement one, which means that you know this statement is garbage before you go to statement two. A lot of times what that means is the test maker is setting you up to fail by giving you a situation where the information you're being given in statement one is totally unnecessary in statement two, but you've already got it in the back of your head so you think it's relevant. And that's exactly the case here. So we know that this is insufficient and if we go to statement two, from 1970 to 1980, we had a 20% increase. Whenever we're dealing with percent change, I always want to focus on the total that I end up with, not the percent plus the original value, for instance. So if I started with 100, I'd end up with 120 because I added 20%. And I could represent that as 12 tenths times 100, which is exactly what I'm doing up here. Now, we're also given that in 1990, the population of K was 30% greater than it was in 1980, which means that we're going to end in 1970, rather, which means we're going to end up with 13 tenths of X. Now, the question is, can we determine a, an always consistent percent change from 1980 to 1990 based on these two facts? And actually, we can because percent change is the new minus the old over the old. And if you look at this, when we simplify the top, we get 1 tenth X over 12 tenths X. And the X's are going to cancel and we end up with 1 tenth over 12 tenths, which is equivalent to 1 over 12. And that is the percent change that we would get from 19 from 1980 to 1990 based on the information we were given. So by looking at it in terms of X, by looking at it in terms of the original value and using fractions that are, that are inclusive of the percent change and thinking of it as a whole number, um, we can get to the answer pretty efficiently and statement two is in fact sufficient. And I will also say when you're looking at percent change, a 20% increase, I will always represent as six fifths of X because I'm adding one fifth to five fifths of X, which would have been hundred percent, a 20% decrease. I'll end up at four fifths of X because I still have 80% left. And this is essentially how we want to think of percent change on the GMAT. It's just the easiest way to work on it. Um, you don't want to involve decimal points. You don't want to use percentages. Fractions are the easiest to work with. So always stick with your fractions.